very good afternoon to all eh? brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. So today we will continue after one thirty to three o'clock. Puja follow by briefing. Our puja will be very simple. Eh? And this one we may skip and follow the Art Sutta. In fact, most of the essential dharma that we supposed to cover, like strengthening the five spiritual faculty of sadha, virya, siddhi, samadhi, and panya, we have covered to root out the opposite five mental hindrances of sensual desire, ill will, sloth, and torpor, restlessness of mind and doubt, <clears throat> and develop. The understanding of the following essential dhamma for right effort, I think we will be covering it. The five way to overcome unwholesome thought or wrong thought, we also will be covering. Five daily contemplation, we have com completed. The three evil roots of greed, hatred, delusion, we also covered. Five creatures of form and mind, we also covered. Except to our link, but it's just more better. And the four number two also, I think we have covered. The four foundation of mindfulness, seven factors of enlightenment, and importance of devotional practice or puja, etc. Okay, so now we will continue from the uh, uh, Heart Sutta, where we stop. Uh, Man, you are not back. Eh? <laughs> uh, is PG around? Or PG no? Now my, I get MB to read la, after this. Uh. <laughs> now my, we wait for them. But we can start first now my. Mm. Okay. Angbi, you can help to read the Hasuta Manya not back yet. Yeah. Uh, page 30. We are at lesson 5. Uh. This one is covering uh, Venerable Shi. He is a very famous Zen master. Ma Master Shen Hua's teacher, and he has a lot of very good disciples propagating the Dhamma all over the world. His enlightenment also very unique. That's why we share this. Mm. Turn to page 30 of your heart suitable, eh? then we can continue. Mm. Page 30, part 1, recapitulation of an emphasis on the previous lesson, 1.1. Introducing Master Xianhua for the fifth patriarch of Sakyamuni Buddha lineage. In 1948, after 3,000 miles of travel, Master Xianhua reached Nanhua Monastery near Canton and received a wonderful mind-to-mind -mind transmission of all Buddhas from the Venerable Master Xi Yun and became the 45th Petriya in the line of succession from Sakyamuni Buddha. Master Shi Yin is also the teacher of Master Bo Yuan, the late abbot of this Mahayana Vihara, Wu Ping Jing Se. 1.2 Introducing the late Venerable Master Shi Yin, 44th Petriya in, in the line of succession from Sakyamuni Buddha. Xi Yin was born on 26 April 1840 in Fujian, China, and passed away in 1959 at the age of 120. He is one of the most influential Chan masters of the past two centuries, and arguably the most important in modern Chinese history. Unlike Catholicism and other branches of Christianity, there was no organization in China that embraced all monastic in China. 
not even all monastic within the same sect. Traditionally, each monastery was autonomous, with authority resting on each respective abbot. This changed with the rule of the Communist Party. In 1953, the Chinese Buddhist Association was established at a meeting with 121 delegates in Beijing. The meeting also elected a chairman, four honorary chairmen, seven vice chairmen, a secretary general, three deputy secretaries general, 18 members of a standing committee, and 93 directors. The four elected honorary chairmen were the Dalai Lama, the Panchen Lama, the Grand Lama of Inner Mongolia, and Xin himself. Though Chan is less well known in the West compared to Japanese Zen, the teachings of Xin have persisted within Asia, and he is still a major figure of Pure Land Buddhism in East Asia. Outside of China, the influence of his teaching is strongest in Southeast Asia, particularly in Vietnam and Myanmar, as well as in America, where his teachings were transmitted through well-known monastic students such as Venerable Xianhua and Venerable Ting Sakya and Venerable Fo Yuan Sakya. Roman 1. Middle Age and Enlightenment At the age of 43, Xin had by then left the home life for more than 20 years, but he had not yet completed his practice in the path. He had not repaid his parents' kindness, and so he vowed to again make a pilgrimage to Nanhai, from Fahua Temple all the way to Chengliang, peak at Mount Wutai, or Five Peak Mountains of the Northwest, the Bodhi Mandala of Manjushri. He made one full prostration every three steps. He prayed for the rebirth of his parents in the Pure Land. Along the way, Xin is said to have met a beggar called Wen Zi, Wen Zi, mm, Wen Zi yeah. who twice saved his life. After, take, after talking with the monks of the Five Peak Mountain, Xin came to believe that the beggar had been a manifestation of Manjushri. Having achieved singleness of mind, Xin traveled west and south, making his way through Tibet. He visited many monasteries and holy places, including the Potala, the seat of the Dalai Lama, and Hashil Hunpo Monastery the seat of the Panchen Lama. He traveled through India and Ceylon and then across the sea to Burma. During this time of wandering, Xin felt his mind clearing. Xin felt his mind clearing and his health growing stronger. Xin composed a large number of poems during this period. After returning to China, during Xin's 53rd year, he joined other venerable masters of um, other venerable masters Hu Zhao, Yue Xia, and Xin Lian, Lotus Seal, to cultivate together. They climbed Jiuhua's mountain and repaired the huts on Cui Feng Summit, where Dhamma master Pu Zhao expounded the Mahavaipulya Buddha, Avatamsaka, Flower Adornment Sutra. When Xin was 56, the abbot Yue Lang of Kaoming Temple in Yangzhou, Yangzhou planned to convene a continuous 12-week session of Diana meditation. Preparing to leave, the group asked Xin to go first. After reaching Tikang, he had to cross the water but had no money. The ferry left without him. As he walked along the river's edge, he suddenly lost his balance and fell into the rushing water, where he bobbed helplessly for a day and night and was caught in a fisherman's net. He was carried to a nearby temple where he was revived and treated for his injuries. 
feeling ill, he nevertheless returned to Yangzhou, Yangzhou. When asked by Gao Ming whether he would participate in the upcoming weeks of meditation, he politely declined without revealing his illness. The temple had rules that those who were invited and had to attend or else face punishment. In the end, Gao Ming had Xin beaten with a wooden ruler. He willingly accepted this punishment, although it wasn't his condition. For the next several days, Xin sat in continuous meditation. In his autobiography, he wrote, In the purity of my singleness of mind, I forgot all about my body. Twenty days later, my illness vanished completely. From the moment, with all my thoughts entirely wiped out, my, pra my practice took effect throughout the day and night. My steps were so, my steps were as if, my steps were as swift, 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 uh, as, yeah. swift, uh. swift as if I was flying in the air. One evening after meditation, I opened my eyes and suddenly saw I was in brightness, similar to broad daylight, in which I could see everything inside and outside the monastery. But he knew that this occurrence was only a mental state and that it was not at all rare. He did not become attached to this achievement, but continued his single-minded investigation of the topic, who is mindful of the Buddha. Over and over again, he delved into this topic without interruption. During the 12th lunar month, on the third evening of the eighth week of the session, after six hours of sitting meditation, the attendant made his rounds, filling up the tea cups. Xu Yin's hand was burned by spilling boiling water, and his cup fell to the floor. At the sound of the crash, the root of his doubt was instantly severed. He was joyous beyond words at having fulfilled his lifelong ambition. It was as if he had just awakened from a dream, and he observed how the conditions of the past unravel. Xu Yin's verse explanation says, A cup fell to the ground with a sound clearly heard. As space was pulverish, the mad mind came to a stop. Okay, so this expression or explanation by Xu Yin is very beautiful. Do you know why, after achieving all the fantastic meditation, witnessing all the fantastic, what they call, uh, like, supernatural transformation of mind. So, he can perform a lot of things in that situation. People would call it psychic. Then, in the middle of the night, suddenly, everything is like broad daylight. Inside and outside of the monastery is like, it is so clear to him with all the brightness. But these are what we call the 50 Divan Samadhi. In the Mahayana Sutta, there is a Sutta that is called Surangama Sutta, where inside it is explained, Wu Si Yin Mo, the 50 Divan Samadhi. They manifest through the aggregates of mind. Every aggregate got 10. 5 aggregate, 50. So this light manifestation is very common within the teaching. So despite all this, he knew that these are mind state, not wisdom. That's why he did not get attached to it. Then what happened was, Despite having all those fantastic progress and fantastic meditative experience, how did he become enlightened? After that hot boiling water spilled and burned his finger. Do you know what happened at that instant? 
where you have your senses stacked down. He was in a state of shock. And what happened? Suddenly, no thought. <laughs> no thought. Then, natural reflex, he released. Not to say he purposely released. His finger just give way and let the cup drop. But at the instant where he has no thought, that is his true mind, the silent mind. Then when the cup reached the floor and cracked, that vibration, that cracking vibration, trigger of enlightenment. So in his poem, he said, a cup fell to the ground with a sound clearly heard. Means what? That when the nature heard it. As space was polarized. Means what? There is no more space. That's not the mundane mind. All gone. Then there is no more space. Then this mad mind, which is the man, mundane mind, came to a complete stop. Understand? So space, pulverized means there is no mind at all. That's why he cannot find the mad, he called it the mad, mundane mind. He said the mad mind came to a complete stop. Means he realized what? Cessation of form and mind. That's how he awakened. So this poem is very beautiful. Yeah. So a lot of cultivator doesn't understand. When you strive very hard, you want to realize, you want to achieve. That striving is still a thought behind, you understand? Right? That's why it cannot cease. Like Sun Siu, strive very hard. Polish until it shine, until no dust can light. But the real realization is not striving, not like uh, striving with the thought, holding on to the thought and try to realize. That's why even in the Thai tradition, Achan Cha, you visit the temple, Wat Papong, eh? and Wat Pat Nanachat, the branch temple of the English Western disciple of his, he wrote there, don't try to be an Aran. <laughs> the try is by the thought. How can the thought realize the state that is beyond thought and to become an Aran? Another example is, you remember Ananda? After the Buddha passed away, what happened? They want to set up the first council. They have a requirement that all must be arahant. But Ananda being the attendant who can recite the whole sutta inside out is not an arahant. He is still a sotapan. So what happened? They gave him time and asked him to strive very hard. He tried until almost dawn already. The next morning is the first council. So Ananda also tried his very best. Then he decided to give up. Then what happened? He lie down and want to sleep or rest. Before his head hit the pillow, he became an arahant. You realize? When there is no more striving, when you can be the way it is, just let things be. The mind must be in that state of awareness, silent. Then with the wisdom already developed, that it will cease by itself. Cessation cannot be forced, Anasana. You cannot look for Nibbana, Anasana. Nibbana is to be realized when the causes and condition is fulfilled. That's why the mundane mind that realizes itself and sees. I still remember in the year 1989. I contemplated, reflected, and meditated until I understood all the Dhamma inside out. But I never like them wait for the moment. What happened was, I came to know that all these are dependent, originating, conditioned Dhamma, not real, not what you think. 
So finally, I contemplated the three periods of time, past, present, and future. Then I realized everything is within the mind, like the Buddha said. Mind is a forerunner of all things. Mind is chief. When mind arises, all things arise. But all these are dependent originating, empty, no mark, not real. Understand? Not? Then I reach a point uh, where my mind is so sensitive, uh, I cannot think on. Uh. If I want to read something uh, or think, uh, I can feel the very fine suffering inside there. Even to feel is suffering, to perceive is suffering, to arise, uh, sankara movement or activity is suffering, and to be conscious through the senses also suffering. When I reach that state, inside the wisdom tell me, think also like that, don't think also like that. What for think? Then inside my nature tell me, you want to suffer? Think lah. Work lah. Use lah. So, naturally, I reach that state and I just let things be. When I let things be, uh, the cessation keep coming. Keep coming. That's why I transform all that. Yeah. You cannot look for it one. Understand? If you look for it, it cannot come on. Like just now, I think, was it Michael or Kong Chai asked me that question? Huh? Uh, we walk up the slope that time. Who was it that asked? You or Kong Chai? Huh? Oh, you, you were asking. Oh, so Michael is the one that asked. Huh? Uh, you, you, you repeat your question? We were just casually chatting ah, about ah. seeking the gateway. Ah, correct, we, correct, we find correct. the, yeah, the yeah, stairway. Yeah, correct. Up. correct. Ah, so because we, we were at the kitchen, want to go up the hill. Ah. So, so we went beyond the door, the back door. Then we realized wrong. Come back to the door. Ah, then somebody said, oh, found the door already, gateway. I said, this is not the gateway. This one is the door to the summit. Yeah. Then I think either... Michael or I, I was Kongsai, just they the say, way. when you find the gateway, do you know? Uh, and they think they have to look for the gateway. You know? I say, who look for the gateway? The thought look for the gateway. When the thought is active, the gateway cannot manifest. And I said, no. It must be the awareness nature without thought. Then it is somewhere around the heart area. When you are ready with the consciousness condition, it will detect itself. Wherever there is thought, it cannot detect. Where that gateway is that nature. That's all. You're supposed to go into that nature. And the gateway that allows you to go is also the unconditioned. So with the thought looking for it, it cannot open up. Uh, that's why cessation cannot occur when your thought is active. When you strike very hard. Like Sun Xiu, like Xu. And Xu was lucky. The boiling water, the attendant pour, they say sometimes, uh, uh, blessing in this guy. Uh, you think the attendant make a mistake, uh, not careful. Uh, but not purposely. Uh, carefully, but still burn uh, she in Lao Sang's hand. So normal people who don't understand, uh, like that, this is the song. Uh, somebody will tell her, uh, your back karma. You think the attendant bad karma? Actually, good karma. No? He trigger all along. Without him, uh, cannot happen. No? So, it's nothing to do with good or bad. Right? It's how you perceive a situation. So how you understand a situation. Because she has that condition to become enlightened. So, somebody will do it. Right? And the attendant is supposed to be the most appropriate one. I wouldn't say he's a chosen one. No? So, no. He's the most appropriate way he do this, understand? Uh, so just uh, Yun Chan also got stung by the bee or the 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 weaver. What how you from weaver? Was uh, was or the hornet? Uh, then Bengka, uh, then Sui came. Uh, 
Because he said, ah, right you cannot meditate or oh, cannot concentrate or oh, so painful. Oh. I say, can. Relax, ah, be aware. Don't label it as pain. Ah. Don't fight it. Don't resist it. Be with it. Ah. Like the Buddha said, this noble truth of dukkha is to be understood. Understand, ah. Pain, injury, disease, all this stung by be also part of that reality. Ah. That's not ah. So when you have the condition to experience that, the Buddha in the second turning of the first noble truth said, this noble truth or dukkha is to be understood. So Sui said, your good karma, blessing in this guy, you don't get stung, you cannot practice. No. So that is a good one. So do not take anything with negativity. And I like Xian Huang. Although my refuge teacher, you know what did he tell me? He said, "Whatever happened in life, uh, if you accept the reality uh, and apply noble evil power, it will definitely turn around." Uh. Yeah. He said, "Initially, it appear like something very bad, uh, uh, something like that. Then." If you cultivate following Noble Eightfold Path, it will turn around and become a blessing in this guy. And I rejoiced when I heard that in 1986. Uh, I was recording his talk together with my wife when he came to that uh, Oakland Road Mahayana Temple. And I like his talk. Well, the way he speaks, uh, the traditional Mandarin from China, uh, very funny, you know, my wife, Chinese school teacher, he listened, uh, he said, I don't know what he's trying to say. Uh, we are a dumb man. That's all. But I listen, uh, I say, I can understand him very clear. You know, uh, so he, he always say this, uh, he said, For is sing, sing is for, Wu Hui sing, Jiu Wu Hui for. Uh, and the other famous saying is about the deviant samadhi, uh, yeah, about what they call mo. Mo yu mo zhen dao, zhen dao cai yu mo. Ye mo ye guang liang, xian chu ben lai fo. Oh, that was beautiful, no? Uh, you see, you know what is mo, no? That is a pun, no? That's a, the pan more can mean more and so on. The other one is mara. That one also more. So he said, more you more chen dao. Means if you are cultivating the two dhamma, then they will come and test you. They, they will come and do a lot of things to you. Uh, then he, he said, chen dao cai you more. You are not on that path. Uh, you cannot receive all these tests. Right? No. But when they test you and you pass, uh, you are the real one. That's why, more you more zhen dao, zhen dao cai you more, ye more ye guang liang, guang liang gen yao more, more dao lu chu ye, xian chu ben lai fo. Then only your original nature, which is the Buddha nature, can manifest. That's why you have to keep on developing the cultivation, the understanding, and realize that Dhamma that will enable you to realize the Buddha nature within you. So all this, the enlightened being, the patriarch who have the understanding, they can advise you. And the thing that they spoke is very penetrative. And I like to listen to his teaching. Mm. Then he also shared a lot of other things. Uh, and 86 until now, uh, 30 over to 40 years already. Uh. So if you have a chance to listen to his teaching, you should listen. But I think now you cannot find it. Uh, YouTube is the disciple translate one. He's talking, uh, or still there. Uh. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you're trying to listen. Uh, 
because I find it very useful. At that time, 86, my whole family take refuge and I keep on listening attentively. You know. That's how I heard his tree turning or the phone over through. You know. And I realized he's wanna run a little bit. You know. He used Mandarin. You know. yeah. He said, This is cool, Luing Zi, I said. So I translate uh, this is suffering. You should know it. Then I realize not correct now. Then I check the Theravada. Uh, this is the noble truth of dukkha. This noble truth of dukkha is to be understood now. No, it is not enough, no. That's how you must understand what that thing is. No? Oh, then I realized maybe his way of phrasing the Dhamma in Mandarin is like that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, then the rest are correct. Yeah. Then the cause of arising of suffering, you must abandon it or severe it. Uh, Luing Tuan. Uh, then uh, what they call cessation of dukkha uh, is to be realized. Uh, uh, that one he used the Mandarin word. Uh, no, uh, no, seal is the eightfold power, the fourth one. Uh, the part of the au. Uh, uh, I think it's chen. Uh. Uh, you must realize it. Uh, you must realize it. Yeah. Then the noble eightfold path, the fourth noble truth, Luing Siu, you have to cultivate it. Uh, that one match perfectly. So only slight deviation in the first noble truth of Tukka. He said, This is a cool Luing Zi. Maybe Zi, the meaning can be understood also. Yeah. Oh, maybe like that. Uh, yeah, to me, it's uh, to be. Uh, at that time, I say, this is Dukkha. Dukkha is to be understood. But he say, you must know it. I already know it. You must also know it. Yeah, there is a disciple who translate what he said. Now. Then I realize, the three turning cannot be like that one. Knowing it is not enough. You have to understand what it is. So a lot of his sharing is very beautiful. Yeah. So you have a chance uh, to go and uh, listen. But don't worry. He got a lot of English book that is translated. His Hat Sutta is not bad. His uh, Surangama also very good. Uh, then he also have this Jing Kang Jing, also good. Yeah. And he came up with a lot of sutta and he went to the West. He did a lot of English translation. Actually, it's meant to be on. Yeah, after 89, yeah, my brother got a posting to Seattle. You know, yeah? He was an electrical engineer. So he told me the company sent him there for a course. So I say, oh, very good. Seattle, near to Master Shen Hua's monastery there. The one for Chen. I say, can you do me a favor? Visit there. Whatever English book translator already on, you buy. I say, I will pay you. So he bought and shipped it back to me you now. Thousand over US dollar. <laughs> and you know why I got interested in Shen Hua's translation. Because in 1987 or 88, when I was working in a university, somebody came and sell me something, you know, tennis court surface. That time, synthetic tennis court surface very rare. I think this guy, the company, was the first to actually do it. Then my secretary told me, is it Brett, you got one salesman. You know, like, the word salesman, uh, I normally don't want to meet. Uh, my, my secretary also know I don't want to meet. Uh, I said, a salesman, no need to pass the call to me. Uh, then my secretary felt something. Uh, he said, 
Mr. Teo, this one, uh, Mr. Teo, he called, this one very patient or not. He called me six times already. Huh? I said, got such people. Okay, okay, I said, call me. It came in a young fellow. And you never believe. So he showed his brochure. Okay, I said, fair enough. We are his races here. He gave me a 50% discount and asked me to try. We are VIA University. So I tried. Then I find it good. I asked for three cuts to be done up. So what happened was when I was discussing with him, he saw I have a yellow string on my hand now. You at that time, I actually wear the string to protect people who don't know me, simply say things uh, to protect their coming negativity. So I look at him, I say, yeah, I say, yeah, I say, he said, you Buddhist? I say, in a way, like, I started with Buddhism. Like, I give you a book. Is it? <laughs> so I thought Buddhist book. Like, I say, okay, okay. I say, you know, the next day he brought uh, the first uh, volume one uh, of the Surangama Sutta translated in English you know, by Master Xuan Hua. It's a photo set copy. I think he must have photostat it back and his own copy, he gave it to me. Hey! I said, who are you? How come you can get this copy? Then he looked at me. My father asked me to come back. Yeah, he got no son to take over. So he has to come back. He's only 23 years old. He said, I am Master Xian Hua's Kapia. Uh, got such thing. Uh. Kapia, <laughs> no. He said he served Master Chen Hua many years. <laughs> oh. Then I said, thank you, thank you so much. Such thing can happen. Or not. Yeah. Then when I read that book, uh, I tell you, I never believe you. I read through, uh, like so easy to understand. No? I said, what is this book? How come got such book one? Then I try to get more. Uh, but I contact him, he said, only that copy <laughs> was translated, the rest not yet. So I leave it at that. Then my brother, when he was posted there, it was 1990 something already. Yeah. I asked him to buy back all. So he bought thousand over US dollar. Yeah. That's how the book come. That's why when you have the affinity, all this will come. Then later on, I came to know from another office colleague, a lady who is a Christian. The Christian saw me every Friday. I locked my door and meditate inside. 2.45 exactly, I on the light and I opened the door. Then he came in. He said, Mr. Teo, I think this will interest you. I said, what is it? You know that brochure that was printed to tell the public that Master Xuan Hua and his delegation is coming. Hey, I look at him, I thought, are you a Christian? He said, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I saw you are very pious Buddhist. You meditate a lot, non-stop. Oh, I said, then I look at him, I said, you got some more. I need to pass to other people. Oh, then he got me three copies. Then I came back, I tell my wife, uh, want to make offering. Uh. You know what happened? He got a classmate. Uh. The brother was ordained among under Master Xian Hua. He also come in the delegation. Uh. You see? So whatever I want to offer, uh, I buy all the requisite. Uh. And that was the first time I went to the bank uh, and buy a bank draft, uh, US dollar. Uh. Uh, the time money quite big. Uh. But I only bought 500 US dollar. We offer the whole thing through the cousin. Uh, uh, sorry, the sister's brother who was among that follow Master Shara. That's why I know his schedule, I know his day, and we went there, record every day, every night, until the last day we took refuge, the whole family. Meant to be, it will be. Things will happen. So do not doubt. Affinity is real. When you have affinity, things will unfold. So this is the part that I hope it can give you confidence, yeah? can actually let you develop the faith, the sadha, 
the understanding, not to doubt anymore, to just cultivate. You have nothing to lose. If you try, you cannot realize it, does not help you, then you only wasted some time, understand? Or? It doesn't harm you, understand? Or? In any way. But this is not energy field, not jhana, not concentration. The defilement or insight won't come and catch you, understand? Or? Pure awareness space, don't get that. What Shen Hua they all went through, he, because he vowed to have all the five spiritual penetration, including the sixth one. And because he vowed that, he got a lot of these things come and test him and do all those things. Yeah. Mine, the test is from nature's law. No Mara come. <laughs> I just went through life and everything just unfold normally, beautifully. So all these are the understanding. Okay, read on. Uh, I'm going to let King B read first. Eh? Yeah. 1.3. Meaning of we accord with conditions or flow with the Dhamma. The word accord means not to resist. Hence, there is harmony and no conflict. Conflict means disharmony, argument, etc. So to flow with the Dhamma means the same, i.e. don't resist, or argue via accepting things as they are, or via seeing things as they are, without delusion and let things be. It is like martial art. If we were to resist or defend via rigid Kung Fu, then both will get hurt. But if you can use Tai Chi to flow with it, then Tai Chi will send the force back to the aggressor who will be hurt by their own force. 1.4 The phenomenal world is an illusionary world of consciousness. Definition of phenomenon Anything that is perceivable by the mind is a phenomenon. Then how do you know the world? Via our consciousness and mental perception, isn't it? And since consciousness and mental perceptions are just mental images in our mind that arise and pass away continuously, hence the reason why it is said the phenomenal world is actually an illusionary world of consciousness, empty. The Mahayana also got a very famous saying, perception of form is consciousness, whereas is non-perception, is wisdom. This is the most profound quote, quoted by the Surangama Sutra, and the enlightened one will understand it. Now you understand why the Mahayana always said that the phenomenal world is the world of consciousness. This is also the reason why the Surangama Sutra said consciousness create the world and the continents, the stars and the universe and the knower become the living beings. Through thought and form, delusion, the knower deluded cling onto the five aggregates of form and mind, or living beings, thinking that it is real, and this is what they are. Hence, the deluded living beings clinging, clinging onto the force becomes the traveler in space and time wandering through samsara and undergoing birth and death for eternity. So when you understand this, do you still want to become the deluded traveler in space and time? Ah, no more, understand? You live life. You don't deludedly attach and cling and think that you are real. That is what you are. That's why you roam in samsara for eternity. But when you realize the wisdom, you know it's karmically conditioned from a mind, you take the bodhisattva away, then you can live life, understand? Living life and be deluded and calling yourself the traveler in space and time is delusion, understand? So this is the big difference. Where you understand, you live life. Okay, continue, please. Notes 1. True mind does not stir. Through suchness or ruru putong, only the mundane mind stirs via delusion. Mundane mind without wisdom is the discriminating thinking mind. 
2. Definition of hallucinatory. Thinking that it is real but is actually not real. 3. J. Krishnamurti said, The observer is the observed. This is seeing things as they are, via the direct seeing without words. In a similar way, the Buddha also taught the same. In the seeing, it is only the seeing consciousness, and there is no one to see. Hence, no delusion. Otherwise, the moment you associate and cling onto what you see or what you observe, delusion or sakaya ditti has already arisen. Okay, maybe I explain a bit huh, for new people. You see, when the Surangama Sutta say, perception of form is consciousness, what does it mean? Whereas it's non perception, is wisdom. To understand this is very easy if you have the awareness nature. Because who perceive? The mundane mind perceive, understand? That's why this is mundane seeing. Perception of form is consciousness. Oh, sorry, whereas. Uh, So this is Monday seeing. Whereas this one, the non-percept is direct seeing. Seeing things as they are without the words. That's why those who are enlightened, they straight away will understand this profound stanza, which is full of wisdom. When after 89, I read this, I rejoice. They say, such a sutta really exists. That's why I always tell Kayamita last time, all these sutta are for enlightened being to understand. You are not awakened. You cannot understand. So perception of form is consciousness. Because the conscious human being, through the mundane mind, they perceive a lot of things. So when you see something through memory, you perceive. Then you label it. That's how he become consciousness. And set up. So this is mundane seeing to mundane consciousness. Whereas it's non-perception means the direct seeing when you use your awareness nature to see. I better write here huh? so that you understand. We are awareness nature. This awareness nature is not a mundane mind, understand? It cannot perceive. It has got no concept, no word. It's just a nature. It's just aware. That's why like seeing things as they are, direct seeing. So there is no one to perceive. And when you see things as they are through the direct seeing, that is what wisdom is. You see the reality, and that's all. Like the chair, I say, different people say Kurosi, 
以知啊 ，or magia or whatever. Different label, eh? Appear like different, but pointing to the same thing. Ah,、uh, the direct seeing, he see this thing as it is. No matter what you describe, he know whether you mundane see or you direct see or you have gone towards the suchness see. They were not, but they understood creation. They understood all this manifestation. That's why this is my make. This is from the nature you see. Then the other one is when you transcend duality. No need to cling on to mundane seeing or argue about direct seeing. Because this fellow, when he see mountain, he say there is no mountain. Can sun push the sun? This fellow, mundane seeing, see mountain. Mountain lah. Everybody know is mountain lah. But the one with the further higher wisdom that transcend duality, he can adopt to both understand. Can sun. Use the sun is mountain is mountain again become normal. You say mountain yes. You say no mountain yes. Both also he can agree. That's why to him there is no right, no wrong. They are just the way they are. So when you understand all this, the whole teaching become very beautiful, very interesting. Okay, yeah. Go on, thank me. Part two meditation, two point one visualization technique. Question one: Can visualization like visualizing a blue sky be used as a technique to develop mindfulness? Brother Dio answered: This type of visualization technique, like any other skillful means, if used with understanding, can also bring about the training of the mind to be peaceful and calm. Just like auto suggestions via music, sound, and vibration, etc. But the disadvantage of this type of skillful means is that it usually only works for the first few times, and after a while, like good food, it loses its effectiveness. The other type of visualization technique, using kasina or the forty objects of meditations, used. To develop one pointedness concentration, followed by the development of jhana, and deep concentration leading to all the other psychic abilities, is more dangerous, unless it is done with understanding, and preferably under the guidance of a very good and very skillful meditation teacher. If one clings and attaches to such one pointedness concentration. And special jhanic abilities, then one can get trapped, and chances of deviation from the true cultivation of developing wisdom to free the mind from all suffering can happen. The mind that is, that is in one pointedness concentration is a conditioned mind that is still within the field of thought, and all the anusaya or latent tendency of the mind. Are still suppressed and not rooted out as yet. Such a mind is not a free mind with clear awareness and samadhi, born of equanimity or wisdom. Two point two: the wisdom of lettings be. Question two: How to apply the wisdom of lettings be to solve all of our life's problem? Bertiu answered. We write views born of wisdom to accept the reality of the moment. We will not react or allow the mind to stir when confronted with the first noble truth, realities of life and existence, the eight conditions. Hence, no fear, no worry, and anxiety or any suffering. That is, we just let things be. After accepting the realities of the moment. Then, with a calm and clear mind, we can weigh our options and act appropriately, following the noble eightfold path, which is the meditation as taught by the Buddha. To solve all our life situations or problems amicably, to, to resolve, resolve, or to resolve all our life situations or problems amicably, i.e., without any negativity or wrong thoughts. To cause our mind to stir, we can be at peace because wrong thoughts are thoughts that condition one's fear 
worry, anxiety, unhappiness, and misery, etc. Without wisdom and right views born of understanding, the Buddha Dhamma, one will react and the mind will stir due to the fear, worry, and anxiety, etc. Born of their wrong views, just like normal deluded living beings, leading to all the mental sufferings, i.e. grief, sorrow, and lamentation, etc. The cause of suffering is self-delusion that conditions one's grasping and one's clinging to one's five aggregates of form and mind. This is the second noble truth. Under the third noble truth, the Buddha said, suffering need not be if one has the wisdom and enlightenment can be realized in the here and the now. All Nibbana is possible. Then following the fourth noble truth, which is the way out of suffering, one cultivates the noble effort path, which is the meditation as taught by the Buddha, lead, leading to the end of all suffering. Okay, this one I just have a small thing to add. Uh, the question is how to apply wisdom of letting go to resolve all of our life's problems. So this one I have taught you. Uh, accept first, no reaction, no anger, no blaming, nothing, no pointing finger. Because like the Buddha say, whatever arises, there are causes and conditions. So this is the reality. When you see things as they are, you are at peace. Then with a clear mind, you act following Noble Eightfold Path. But a lot of, in the early days, I heard that some of the Kayamita, they couldn't understand that. You know what they say? They say, eh, hey, you keep poor. Brother, you say, let things be, you know. Means everything might chop. You know why it might chop or not? They don't want to get involved, understand? No. That's why I say, please don't quote me. Very dangerous. So when you quote me without understanding, you not only get you into trouble, you also get me into trouble. Well, you quote Brother Tio say, correct, huh? I say, let things be. Huh? But let things be has deep meaning. Huh? The thing is just the way it is. You want thing your way, you suffer, understand? Or not? But it's not like what you say. When I say let things be, means I accept the reality first, then I act, understand? Or not? To resolve things amicably via the Dhamma way, which is noble info palm application. Ah, get that right. Otherwise, you become gullible like what they did. But so far, so good. The last 15 over a year, I didn't hear this anymore. In the early days, uh, I keep on reminding them, no, don't quote me, you know. Uh, and they feel funny, you know. Why cannot quote Brother Tio? <laughs> you know, they realize I also quote the Buddha, correct? Not? But I can understand the Buddha, that's why I had to quote him and explain. You don't understand what I mean. You quote me and you cannot explain. You get yourself into trouble, you get us into trouble, you get all the Kalimita into trouble. That's why after that, I think they are wise already. They never mention. They always say, oh, you want to understand more? Attend the class or on the YouTube uh, and listen yourself. Understand? Uh? Yeah. Otherwise, unless you have the Dhamma understanding, you can quote me no more. Uh, no problem, by all means. Uh, and I will rejoice. Uh, but when you are not ready, try not to. Uh? You just say, uh, I attend the Bradley's class, I actually benefited a lot. That's it. Yeah. So if you want to understand more, I think you better attend yourself yeah? or listen to it yourself. Yeah? Make your own judgment. Then no more conflict. Understand? No need to like eager to promote, eager to get built. No. Actually, to tell you the truth, I don't want follower. Understand? <laughs> Unless you've got condition. You can never come to me. So, thing is just the way it is. Some come for a while, disappear. Because the coming obstruction, they manifest. So, all these other understanding, as you cultivate the Buddha Dharma, you walk this path, you develop the understanding, and you become very different. So, keep in mind what I said before. For many years, I didn't really repeat this already, but there are new people here. That's why I need to repeat this and say, please don't quote me. 
unless you are ready and understand what I say. Otherwise, I realize some of them too eager to be right eh, and like want to promote Brother Teo Kayameta in my name. Eh. They say, no, 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 Brother Teo didn't teach like that. Brother Teo say like that. Ah, finish already. Once you start like that, argue, eh, people come and see me. Eh. But touch wood. Last 20 years, nobody come and see me. <laughs> nobody argue with me on this. Yeah. So, so far, so good. Eh. I think Kayamita also have good karma, good blessing. So we didn't antagonize or create any misunderstanding despite our website. After our website come out, my son was worried. No? Oh. <laughs> you ask my daughter, you see. You keep on telling me, you know, please, you see. Very dangerous. People come after you. <laughs> but so far, so good. And now he okay already. He, he no longer worry already. Then he realized Sui helping me. Uh, so things are should be okay. Uh, uh, because anything not right, Sui will inform him. <laughs> so all this is like meant to be. Uh, so this part, make a note. That's it. Continue. Uh, maybe. Ah, yes. Ah, Manyuan, continue. Yeah, Manyuan. Page 36, 1.1. Opening commentary on the heart of Prashna Paramita Sutra. The heart of Prashna Paramita Sutra, with words without, without a stand and prose commentary, consists of three parts. One, the sutra text itself. Two, the Venerable Master Swen Hua's words explanation. And three, the Master's lectured commentary on the texts and verses. This Heart Sutra is an essential summary of the Mahayana Buddhism's teaching on true emptiness. The Heart Sutra is nothing less than a summation of the wisdom of the Buddha. It distills perfectly the teaching of non-attachment, which is the doctrine of emptiness. As the Venerable Master Swen Hua says in his commentary, only the most at once of masters can expect to grasp the full importance of the Sutra by itself, without the aid of a teacher, because this teaching is the heart in the heart within the heart. Brother Dio also concurs with Master Tsiong Hua's statement, and also said, Dharma must be delivered from the heart spontaneously, and not through any prior planning via memory, otherwise it is only knowledge and not wisdom. So this part, I think by now, most of you understand, huh? The true Dhamma must be delivered from the heart. That's why Hui Ning, the six Patriarch, say, whatever Dhamma that is being taught, it must come from that self-nature. If it's not from there, it's memory, knowledge, understand? So, actually, when it is there within your nature, you don't need to prepare anything. Like the fifth Patriarch say, there and then, they can just explain to you. You have the understanding is within the nature. It's not memory. It's not a knowledge. Wisdom is like that. When you awaken to it, it is in your nature. You know means you know. You don't have means you don't have. That's the reason why a lot of people become very confused. <laughs> they say, how come like that? Huh? They thought everything, huh? must commit to memory, or not. otherwise cannot remember. Cannot remember means I don't know. And that is knowledge, and that's not. That's why in the early day, Brother Song also got such problem. He tried to remember, and that's not. He thought must remember. I said, no need one. When you already awaken or realize that thing, you only wait for it to stabilize. When it stabilize, it become a part of you, then you can share it. You can actually teach it. Yeah. But before that, you need a while, a period of stability of understanding. That's why in the early day, I always say, don't try to remember. Then don't try to use the thought to analyze, reason, why like that, why like that. Forget about it. Because Dhamma, there is no such thing as why like that one. Dharma points towards the reality and you know? thing is just the way it is. That is the reality. 
it has to be like that. That's why you cannot use the mundane thinking to reason and analyze. Then you end up confusing yourself because people have a preconceived idea of enlightenment. They think once you realize they hey, enlightened already, yeah, you have certain type of trademark uh, that can make you uh, like completely different. Uh, means you, you cannot uh, make mistake already. And that's, uh, mistake in the sense that you have this Dhamma which is you think a knowledge that you must remember. So every time you want to remember, what happens is you go to your memory. Then when you cannot recall, you panic. And that's all. Here you don't rely on your nature. That's why that type of cultivation, you cannot penetrate on. But if you have awakened to it, you no need to worry on. You don't understand, you will admit on. This one is beyond me. This one I haven't realized. It is beyond me. I cannot explain to you. Ah, they will tell you this. Huh? But when they dare to explain to you, means they have gone through, they have realized, they have the understanding. So that is the big difference. Okay? Yeah, continue. Uh, sorry, Maya. Yeah. The important criteria for translating a heart of Prashna Pramimita Sutra as adopted by Master Siong Ha are the eight guidelines of his Buddhist text. Some can skip. Eh? You okay. read yourself. If you are interested. If you want to be a translator, then you read. Eh? You must not be arrogant, conceit, all those things. Eh? This is Xuan Hua's guideline. Eh? So that people don't have this type of negativity or mind state. Mm. But for us cultivators, these are not so important. Then read the last paragraph, sorry. When there is condition to share, the translated Dhamma one must share, thus allowing the translation to benefit more living beings. This part is okay. Okay, read on. Angulimala Sutta. 2.1 Angulimala Sutra. Thus have I heard that on one occasion, the Blessed One was staying near Savati at Jetta Grove. Anatta Pitika's monastery. At that time, in King Pasanadi's reign, there was a bandit named Angulimala, brutal, bloody-handed, devoted to killing and slaying, showing no mercy to living beings. He turned villages into non-village, towns into non-towns, settled countryside into unsettled countryside. Having repeatedly killed human beings, he wore a garland, mala, made of fingers, anguli. Then the Blessed One, early in the morning, having put on his robes and carrying his outer robe and bow, went into Savati for arms. Having wandered for arms in Savati and returning from his arms round after his meal, he set his lodging in order. Carrying his robes and bow, he went along the road to where Angulimala was staying. Cowherds, Sheepherds and farmers saw him going along the road to where Angulimala was staying, and on seeing him, said to him, Don't go along that road, contemplative, for on that road is Angulimala, brutal, bloody-handed, devoted to killing and slaying, showing no mercy to living beings. He has turned village, village into non-village, towns into non-towns, settled countryside into unsettled countryside. Having repeatedly killed human beings, he wears a garland made of fingers. Group of 10, 20, 30, and 40 men have gone along that road, and even they have fallen into Angulimala's hands. When this was said, the Blessed One kept going in silence. The second time, a third time, cowherds, shepherds, and farmers said to the Blessed One, don't go along that road contemplative. Groups of 10, 20, 30, and 40 men have gone along that road, and even they have fallen into Angulimala's hands. When this was said, the Blessed One kept going in silence. Then Angulimala saw the Blessed One coming from afar, and on seeing him, this thought occurred to him. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it astounding? Groups of 10, 20, 30, and 40 men have gone along this road, 
and even they have fallen into my hands, and yet now this contemplative comes attacking, as it were, alone and without a companion. Why don't I kill him? So Angulimala, taking up his sword and shield, buckling on his bow and quiver, followed right behind the Blessed One. Then the Blessed One wield a feat of psychic power such that Angulimala, though running with all his might, could not catch up with the Blessed One walking at normal pace. Then the thought occurred to Angulimala. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it astounding? In the past, I have chased and seized even a swift running elephant, a swift running horse, a swift running chariot, a swift running deer. But now, even though I'm running with all my might, I can't catch up with this contemplative walking at normal pace. So he stopped and called out to the Blessed One. Stop, contemplative, stop. I have stopped, Angulimala. It is you who haven't stopped. Then the thought occurred to Angulimala. These Sangya contemplatives are speakers of the truth, asserters of the truth. And yet this contemplative, even while walking, says I have stopped, Angulimala. It is you who haven't stopped. Why don't I question him? So Angulimala, the bandit, addressed this verse to the Blessed One. While walking, contemplative, you said, I have stopped. But when I have stopped, you say I haven't. I ask you the meaning of this. How have you stopped? How haven't I? The Buddha. I have stopped Angulimala once and for all, having cast off violence towards all living beings. You are still unrestrained towards beings. That's how I have stopped and you haven't. Angulimala. At long last, a greatly revered great seer for my sake has come to the great forest. Having heard your words in line with the Dharma, I will also abandon all evil. So saying, the bandit hurled his sword and weapons over a cliff into a chasm, a pit. Then the bandit paid homage to the feet of the one well gone and right there requested the going forth. The awakened one, the compassionate great seer, the teacher of the world, along with his devas, said to him then, Come, Bhikkhu. That in itself was Bhikkhu hood for him. Then the blessed one set out wandering towards Savadi with venerable Angulimala as his attendant monk. After wandering by stages, he reached Savadi, and there he lived near Savadi in Jeda Grove, Anathapitika's monastery. Now, at that time, a large crowd of people, loud and noisy, had gathered at the gates to King Pasanadi's Kosala's inner palace, calling out, There is a bandit in your reign, sir, named Angulimala, brutal, bloody-handed, devoted to killing and slaying, showing no mercy to living beings. He has turned village into non-village, towns into non-towns, settled countryside into unsettled countryside. Having repeatedly killed human beings, he wears a garland made of fingers. The king must tempt him out. Then, King Pasinadi Kosala, with a cavalry of roughly 500 horsemen, drove out of Savadi and entered the monastery. Driving as far as the ground was possible for chariots, he got down from his chariot and went on foot to the Blessed One. On arrival, having bowed down, he sat to one side. As he was sitting there, the Blessed One said to him, What is it, great king? Has King Saniya Bimbisara of Magatha provoked you, or have the Dicharis of Vesali or some other hostile king? No, Lord. King Saniya Bibisara of Magatha hasn't provoked me, nor have the Licharis of Vesali, nor has some other hostile king. There is a bandit in my reign, Lord, named Angulimala, brutal, bloody-handed, devoted to killing and slaying, showing no mercy to living beings. He has turned village into non-village, towns into non-towns, 
settled countryside into unsettled countryside. Having repeatedly killed human beings, he wears a garland made of fingers. I am going to stamp him out. Great king, suppose you were to see Angulimala with his hand with his hair and beard shaved off, wearing the robe, having gone forth from the home life into homelessness, refraining from killing living beings, refraining from taking what is not given, refraining from telling lies, living the holy life on one meal a day, virtuous and of fine character, what would you do to him? We would bow down to him, Lord, or rise up to greet him, or offer him a seat, or offer him ropes, arms, food, lodgings, a medicinal requisites for curing illness, or he would, or we would arrange a lawful guard, protection, and defense. But how could there be such virtue and restraint in an unvirtuous, evil character? Now, at that time, Venerable Angulimala was sitting not far from the Blessed One. So the Blessed One, pointing with his right arm, said to King Pasanadi Kosala, That great king is Angulimala. Then King Pasanadi Kosala was frightened, terrified, his hair standing on end. So the Blessed One, sensing the king's fear and hair raise, rising, said to him, don't be afraid, great king. Don't be afraid. He poses no danger to you. Then the king's fear, his terror, his hair standing on end, subsided. He went over to Venerable Angulimala and said, Are you really Angulimala, Lord? Yes, great king. What is your father's clan? What is your mother's clan? My father is Gaga, king, great king, and my mother... A matani. Then may Master Gaga Matani Puta delight in staying here. I will be responsible for your ropes, arms, food, lodgings, and medicinal requisites for curing illness. Now it so happened that at that time, Venerable Angulimala was a wilderness dweller. Her arms were wearing one set of the triple rope made of cash cast off cloth. So he said so he said to King Pasanadi Kosala, Enough, great king, my triple rope is complete. So King Pasanadi Kosala went to the Blessed One, and on arrival, having bowed down, sat to one side. As he was sitting there, he said to the Blessed One, It's amazing, Lord, it's astounding how the Blessed One has tamed the untamed, pacified the unpeaceful and brought to unbinding those who were not unbound. For what we, we could not tame, even with blunt or, blind, or blended weapons, the Blessed One has tamed without blunt or blended, uh, blended weapons. Now, Lord, we must go. Many are our duties, many our responsibilities. Then do, Great King, what you think it is now time to do. Then... King Pasanadi Kosala got up from his seat, bowed down to the Blessed One, and, keep, and keeping him to his right, departed. Then, Venerable Agulimala, early in the morning, having put on his robes and carrying his outer robe and, and bow, went into Savati for arms. As he was going from house to house for arms, he saw a woman suffering a bridge birth. On seeing her, the thought occurred to him. How tormented are living beings? How tormented are living beings? Then, having wandered for arms in Savati and returning from his arms around after his meal, he went to the Blessed One. On arrival, having bowed down to him, he said to one side, he sat to one side. As he was sitting there, he said to the Blessed One, Just now, Lord, early in the morning, having put on my robes and carrying my outer robe and bow, I went into Savati for arms. As I was going from house to house for arms, I saw a woman suffering a bridge birth. On seeing her, the thought occurred to me, how tormented are living beings? How tormented are living beings? In that case, Angulimala, go to that woman and on arrival say to her, 
Sister, since I was born, I do not recall intentionally killing a living being. Through this truth, may there be well-being for you, well-being for your fetus. But Lord, wouldn't that be a lie for me, for I have intentionally killed many living beings. Then in that case, Angulimala, go to that woman and on arrival say to her, Sister, since I was born in the noble birth, I do not recall intentionally killing a living being. Through this truth, may there be well-being for you, well-being for your fetus. Responding, as you say, Lord, to the Blessed One, Angulimala went to that woman and on arrival said to her, Sister, since I was born in the noble birth, I do not recall intentionally killing a living being. Through this, may there be well-being for you, well-being for your fetus. And there was well-being for the woman, well-being for her fetus. Then, Venerable Angulimala, dwelling alone, secluded, heedful, ardent, and resolute, in no time reached and remained in the supreme goal of the holy life, for which clean clansmen rightly go forth from home into homelessness. Knowing and realizing it for himself in the here and now, he knew birth is ended, the holy life fulfilled, the task done. There is nothing further for the sake of this world, and thus Venerable Angulimala become another one of the Arahans. Then, Venerable Angulimala, early in the morning, having put on his robes and carrying his outer robe and bow, went into Savati for arms. Now, at that time, a cloth thrown by one person hit Venerable Angulimala on the body. A stone thrown by another person hit him on the body. A pot hurt thrown by still another person hit him on the body. So, Venerable Angulimala, his head broken open and dripping, dripping with blood, his bow broken and his outer robe ripped to stress, went to the Blessed One. The Blessed One saw him coming from afar and on seeing him said to him, Bear with it, Brahman, bear with it, the fruit of karma that would have burned you in hell for many years, many hundreds of years, Many thousands of years, you are now experiencing it in the here and now. Then, Venerable Angulimala, having gone alone into seclusion, experienced the bliss of release. At that time, he exclaimed, Who once was heedless but later is not, brightens the world like the moon set free from a cloud. His evil done deed is replaced with skillfulness. He brightens the world like the moon set free from a cloud. Whatever young monk devotes himself to the Buddha's bidding, he brightens the world like the moon set free from a cloud. Okay, I explain a bit. So this Angulimala Sutta is very famous. And people with problem in delivering baby, especially those who have difficulty like bridge case and all things. It is very common in India at that time, right? even Sri Lanka. They chant the Angulimala Sutta because the power of truth, affirmation is very powerful. Right? Then the other thing about this Sutta is a person who has been a bandit who killed almost a thousand living being, no, human being, no, not living being. And yet, in the same life, can become an arahan. So why do you worry? I, uh, I, got, I don't have such karma, no, I very child. No. You can be as bad as Angulimala. No. Huh? Killing almost 999. No. And yet, he became an arahan. Understand? So when you come to cultivation, don't look down upon yourself. Understand? Like towards the end, there is a Dhammapada saying, he said, this came about because Angulimala was an example who once was heedless, but later on is not, brightened the world like the moon set free from a cloud. 
His evil deeds is replaced by skillfulness. That's how he brightens the world like the moon set free from the cloud. So whenever young man or devotees himself, oh sorry, young man devotes himself to the Buddha's binding, means you all devotee, cultivator of the way, also can. When you sincerely cultivate the Buddha's teaching with faith, you also can become this. He brightens the world like the moon set free from the cloud. So the teaching is very important. So karma like Angulimala, you have to pay back. Otherwise, he cannot become Arahant himself. Because it's immediately effective in the sense that there is no more rebirth. So causes and conditions will arise for him to go through this. When the Buddha knew, explained to him, he said, Endure, he said. If you don't endure, <laughs> you will have to go down to hell and suffer for very, very long. Uh, so, likewise, there were two Arahan in the time of the Buddha. Immediately become Arahan, they came out, they were called to death uh, by two animals, uh, by the animals, I think cow or the one. Uh. So, karma, you cannot play a fool. You have to be careful. You reap what you sow. Do good because good. Do evil because evil. So all these manifestations will arise. Okay, we read the third part, then we end. Eh? Pain in the leg during meditation. Eh? Manya. Question one. While sitting in half lotus for some time, the pain of the leg becomes unbearable. And then when I start to chant, the original pain ceases seizures, but a more severe pain arises in another part of the legs. Why? Brother Dio said, First, you must understand what meditation is and what are you doing in the name of meditation, your purpose and intent. If you don't have such understanding, then there is this tendency to react to unpleasant feeling, sensation that arises during meditation by labeling it as pain which is an aversion or an ill will. And as we all know, Ill will, Ill will is one of the five mental hindrances of the mind that will hinder your mind from entering the meditative state of inner peace and calm. As such, you are already caught or trapped by it. Because of your dislike towards such unpleasant sensation, your mind will try to do something else, like chanting, to either suppress it or move or make it go away. As chanting is just another skillful means to train the mind, and it is still within the field of thoughts. Hence, by doing so, you have lost your focus because meditation consists of two steps. The first step is to develop the training of the mind to be constantly aware, leading to heedfulness. Then, the second step is to use the trained mind to meditate or cultivate the meditation as taught by the Buddha, which is the cultivation of the Noble Eightfold Path. Understanding this will enable you to just silence your mind and patiently relax your body and mind to allow the sensation to be without any like or dislike for that sensation, because it is the nature of this body to develop that sensation if you do not know how to relax to enable the chi to flow through the blockage. Then, sati will take over, and this can result in a shift of consciousness to cease the so-called pain. So, just be aware, or mindful of this, to observe right what is going on within your form and mind, and to investigate via mindfulness to understand how the movement of mind from one state to another comes to be. That is to understand how the stirring of mind comes to be and how the mind can be conditioned into negativity, emotions, selfishness, and fear, etc. Via delusion upon seeing something or hearing something or thinking of something, etc. We stop here. Eh? Now is meditation. Eh? You can have your... 
Oh, sorry. 3 o'clock to 4.15. Okay. Wait. Uh. 3 to 4 only. Uh. Oh, one hour only. Sorry. Okay. 3 to 4. Uh. So now you're off the line. Then you continue with your whatever awareness-based meditation training. So based on what I explained before lunch, uh, try it. My sweeping method or relax. If you cannot uh, be in a calm state, uh, uh, being fit. You can lie down. Uh, try to look for a place where you can lie down. You feel very relaxed on. You don't worry. You give it a try. Lie down. Yes. You cannot see it and your leg like that. It's better for you to lie down. It, it's like you want to rest. Uh? Baby, you listen. It's like you want to rest. Okay. But don't sleep. That is the only requirement. Ah. Ah. Ah, so he passed you the mat. Huh? You can give it a try. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Then the rest of you who already have the understanding, you continue to develop the stability of it by applying the four support, especially the first three. Yeah? Okay, I will set the alarm. Mm.